All right, we'll get started. So I'll repeat one more time, both for anyone who's just entered and also for anyone who's going to be watching the recording today. Um, we're going to do some tiger exercises and uh, some of that will involve going down onto the floor. So you might want to have a mat ready uh, to make yourself more comfortable to do that. Of course, you can do it without a mat, but a mat may make some of it a little bit more easy and comfortable. So before we start into that, we, we are going to do some warm ups, but I'll also make a, a few comments about the tiger practices that we're going to do. Um, a lot of the animal practices that we do are significantly more strenuous than some of the other Qigong practices. So um, they have a, a different feeling to them. They're quite more energetic. They have much more of a yang quality to them. But of course, they are still working with our energy flows in many different ways. In particular, the way that we're going to do uh, the, the tiger today, there's going to be quite an emphasis on the wood element. We're also going to see some water, some fire, some other things as well, but there's going to be quite a strong wood emphasis. I'm just going to mute people because we're getting some sounds coming through. Cool, and then we'll unmute later on when we have some discussion. All right, so let's begin. We'll do some gentle warm ups to start with. So, with your feet shoulder width apart, we'll just bring our hands together and start with some joint rotations with our wrists. Definitely a good idea to prepare the body a little bit if we're going to be doing some more strenuous movements. And we'll change to the other side or other direction. Out to the elbows. And the other way. the shoulders, large circles from the shoulder opening up through the whole shoulder, through the side of the body. And the other way. Other arm. And the other way. Waste. And the other way. Knees. And 
And the other way. Ankles. And the other way. Other ankle. And the other way. With our neck, we'll tilt forwards and back and forwards and back and forwards and back. And we'll tilt to one side and the other side. And one side, and the other side, and one side, and the other side. Coming up to the center, release your arms, and just twist side to side, letting the whole body swing nice and loose, loosening the whole body. And coming back to the center. We'll take a moment to just stand, tune into our body, tune into our breath, tune into our energy. So be aware of your whole body, be aware of your feet, your toes, your ankles, your lower legs, your knees, your thighs, your pelvis your abdomen, your chest, your back, your shoulders, your arms, your hands, your neck and your head. Be aware of your whole body. And tune into your breath. Feel the movement of your breath through your body. Let your whole body move with the breath. So as you breathe in, your whole body expands and rises just a little. And as you breathe out, your whole body contracts and sinks just a little. Deep, relaxed breaths, letting the whole body move with the breath. And as your breath moves, your energy starts to flow more freely as well. So you may start to feel the energy start to flow and circulate within you more. Deep, relaxed breaths. Now bringing your hands together. You breathe in, raising the hand, and breathe out, lowering them down. Breathe in, and breathe out. So centering and aligning our body around the center line. So these movements that we're going to do now are specifically to prepare our central nervous system to allow the energy to flow through it more freely as we're going to be doing some more active type of practice we want that energy 
to not be blocked. We want it to be able to flow through the central nervous system freely. That's why we're doing some special preparation just for that. So deep, relaxed breaths. Up and down the same line. Couple more. This time, bring your hands up to the center of your chest. Open out with the palms down. Bring the arms wide all the way back around behind and bring them through with the palms up and open out to the sides, keeping your palms facing all the way up, turning and just breathe naturally as you turn to one side. And then turn to the other side, keeping those palms facing all the way up. This twisting movement with our arms in this position creates a gentle stretch outwards through those nerves, out through the arms and to some extent out through the legs as well. Again, starting to open, prepare the central nervous system. So breathe deep, relax breaths. Just in the rhythm that feels comfortable to you. And we'll do a couple more. And coming to the center, breathe in, raising the hands, breathe out, backs of the hands touching each other as we fold forwards, diving down. Breathe in, palms face up in a scooping shape, coming up close to the body. And breathe out, opening out to the sides. Breathe in. Raising the arms. Breathe out, diving down, back of the hands touching. Breathe in, palms up. Scooping upwards. And breathe out, opening out to the sides. Breathe in. Breathe out. So as we dive down with the backs of the hands touching, we feel a gentle outward stretch out from the sides of the spine. And we breathe in. And now there's a, a gentle drawing up feeling up through the spine. And then we release. Breathe in. Breathe out. So again, we have this outward stretch. So we're still we're preparing that central nervous system, opening it up. And we're coming up, getting that energy to move fluidly, freely through our spinal cord. Breathe in. Breathe out. Breathe in. And out. We'll do a couple more. Breathe in. And out.
Breathe in. And out. Breathe in. And out. Breathe in and out. So the last movement harmonizes left and right. So we'll do the easiest version first. So hand to opposite knee, hand to opposite knee, hand to opposite knee, coordinating left and right, getting the energy to flow between the two sides. If you want to do it in a more challenging way, we go elbow to opposite knee, elbow to opposite knee, elbow, elbow. If you want to make it more challenging, you go hand to opposite foot, hand to foot, hand to foot, and hand to foot. And release down. Okay, so we've prepared ourselves, we've opened some things up, particularly through our central nervous system. So we're ready to do some of these more challenging practices. We are going to do some gentle versions of them. So as we go through, you can choose, we'll do the gentle version first and then a more challenging version. You can choose if you want to just continue to do the gentle version while we do a more challenging version, if that's more appropriate for you. We are going down onto the floor for this. I'm going to face this way. It's going to make it easier to, to see the next few movements. First one, very, very simple. So we're going to make claws with our hands. And we simply come forward, place our claws on the ground if you're able to. If you can't, just come as far forward as you can. Then coming up and bend back. Hands still in claws, letting your whole body arch. Come forwards, touching the ground if you can, then coming up and arch backwards. Come forwards. So a simple forwards and backwards bend. And up and back. forwards. So a big part of the tiger exercises, they're really going to work our connective tissue, linking the activity of all of our connective tissue together as part of that working with the wood element. And this forwards and backwards bending is a start to that, getting all of those tissues activating, working together right through our torso from our hands all the way to our feet so as we come down here we feel a bit of a stretch in our back of our legs and then up through our back and then as we come backwards we feel that stretch through our torso again and up into our arms so everything is linking together it's not just about the muscles it's about how those sheaths of connective tissue are all holding together to support our body and work with a combined action. And forwards. And back. We'll do a couple more. Forwards. And back. And forwards. And back. Okay, so we're coming forwards again. And this time, once we're forwards, we're going to walk our way out until we are in essentially a press up position. Okay, now we're going to do the easy version of this next movement first. So for this, we'll put our knees down onto the ground to do the easy version. So from here, we sit back onto our heels, leaving our arms forwards. 
We then bring our face, our chin down close to the ground. Keep it close to the ground as we come forwards and up. So we sit back, back onto our heels. Bring our chin down close to the ground. Come through forwards and up. Again, coming back. So it's a rolling movement. And again, hopefully you can feel all that connective tissue all working together smoothly, all of it engaging, working together. So one more, sitting back. Chin comes close to the ground. It stays close to the ground as you come forwards and then up at the end. So you can continue to do it that way if you like, or if you would like to do it in a more challenging way. We come back up onto our feet. And so from here, we sit back onto our heels. We then drop our knees down, but not touching the ground. Again, we come through, forwards and up. We sit back onto our heels, drop the knees, not touching the ground, chin close to the ground, through and up. Sitting back, drop the knees, through and up. Sit back, drop the knees, through and up. Sit back, drop the knees, through and up. Okay, next movement, starting with the easy version. So the easy version, again, quite simply, we put our knees down onto the ground. So we've, we've been working, stretching, mobilizing our spine. Now we're going to stretch and mobilize through our limbs. So quite simply, we lift one knee and then extend out, pressing the heel out. Lower it down, lift the other knee, extend out, press the heel out. Change. And again, we can feel this connection. We're not just working our leg, we feel it connecting right through our back, through our abdomen, maybe all the way into our arms, our neck, our head, everything is engaging together to support our movement, particularly through the connective tissue. And change. And change. And change. Now again, we'll do a more challenging version. You can continue doing this one. That's most appropriate for you. To make it more challenging, quite simply, again, we come up onto our feet. We bend our leg and extend, change, bend the leg, extend, change, extend, change, change. Change. Two more on each leg. Change. 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 Good. Again, we can drop our knees down. And we do a similar thing with our arms. So from here, we just lift one arm and reach forward. Change arms, reach forwards. So we're feeling it stretch right through our back, all the way down to our pelvis. And change, everything linking together. Change. Change. change and it's a claw we reach forwards for so it's as if we're reaching forwards to catch something with our claw one more each arm and again to make it more challenging we simply come up onto our feet and reach and reach and 
reach and reach and reach 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 one more each arm reach and reach from here we walk our hands back in we stand up arch backwards and then bring our hands back down the last part of this we've been working linking all of that activity through our body all of our connective tissue we now engage it together so we squeeze with our hands and our feet and then release we squeeze with our hands and feet and release we feel the connection all the way through from the hands through the arms the body down to the legs and release and from the feet up through the legs up through the body out to the hands so everything engages together a couple more and release so these are the warm-ups for our tiger practice they're great exercises in their own right of course but part of the aim as well as the specific benefits of those exercises is to start us feeling the energy that has the characteristic of the tiger which is heavy and strong everything engaging together all that linking together to give the strength of the tiger so hopefully you can see the tiger characteristic through all of those movements just to put it together i'm going to do them again you can join me if you like or you can just watch i'm just going to do each movement once and you can see essentially what we're doing is we're moving through some movements to stretch like a tiger if you've maybe if you watch tigers but certainly if you've watched domestic cats you'll recognize many of these movements the arching of the spine the extension of the limbs just as they get themselves ready and then they're ready to go to do whatever it is they want to do so again you can join in if you like i'm going to just flow one to the next to the next so if you prefer you can just watch to see you know possibly bring out that that animal that tiger characteristic a bit more strongly so we have the forwards and back we come out onto all fours we stretch our back we stretch our legs we stretch our arms and we come up ah, and then we engage everything together we have that connected strength that strong energy flowing through our whole body okay so as i mentioned that's a warm-up so we'll look at some tiger play now as well we'll do it in in pieces um, and then see if we can flow some of that together um, once we've got some of the pieces so the first thing we'll look at is the tiger step or the tiger walk now i realize a lot of people are going to be in small spaces uh, I'm in a medium sized space. We'll, we'll do it in a way that you can make it work in a small space. So the first thing, we want to have our feet reasonably wide in this plane. So we want them at least shoulder width apart. And then we're coming out into a bow stance or it's a kind of lunge, yeah? But we still want to have our feet wide for this, for our tiger stepping, tiger walking something that people sometimes do is they end up doing it like this and this isn't going to embody the characteristics of the tiger so much when we have our feet narrow so they're both they're both long this way but they're also wide this way as well so we can try that on the other side so again feet shoulder width apart we have the other leg back 
into a lunge. Wide this way, as well as long this way. In this position, ideally we want our knee to come above our foot without it going past the toes. So we don't particularly want it back here where it's back behind the ankle. We also don't want it to go past the toes. It's going to sit there right above the foot. This back leg is quite straight, not rigidly straight, but quite straight. And that rear foot is not straight forwards. It's out on a bit of an angle uh, to support us and also to open the hip. Yeah. Okay. So part of what we're aiming to do with this is to get that feeling of being solid, heavy, and strong. So this should be a, we should feel ourselves sink down into the earth, but feel strong strength coming back up from the earth to support us. Now, when we walk, well, let's look at a couple of parts first, and then we'll put it together. So this is a bow stance. To, to do a tiger walk, we transition through what's known as a cat stance, very appropriate um, for a tiger, right? So the cat stance is where the back leg will be flat. The foot will be flat on the ground. We sink down onto it, so it's quite bent still. And then the front foot, just the ball of the foot is on the ground. It can be close or it can be a bit further forwards, but just the ball is on the ground. So in our cat stance, we're very springy. We're anchored to the ground, but we're very light and springy. So there's this contrast between heaviness and then being light and springy as we move. And you think even a big heavy cat like a tiger is able to walk very smoothly, very quietly. And it's by having this lightness within its movements as well. When we bring those two together, we want to transition smoothly from the bow stance to the cat stance. And ideally what we want to do is keep our head and our body at roughly the same height. It's okay if it moves up and down a little bit, but unless we're not able to, we would prefer to avoid coming up and then out. What we really want to do is stay at about the same height about the same height as we move through. Again, if you think of a cat walking, it creates a smooth, strong stepping pattern. Part of what this does as well as we, as we step in this way is we come through. You can probably feel it stretching and opening and doing all sorts of stuff there in your lower back, around your kidneys, the base of your spine. And so we're activating, as part of this, we're activating the water element up through the spine, which is going to then support our strength. Okay, so we'll try a few steps like this and we're also gonna to start to add our arms. We're going to do some clawing movements. So with our clawing movements, with the tiger claw, our hand comes out as a claw and then it sinks in. So it's quite open and then the fingers close. Then it's going to pull back and turn. Uh, actually, we're not going to turn for this one. We're going to just pull back. There's some different variations. So extend out, sink, and then we're going to pull back. And it's going to come underneath the other hand as we extend the other hand. So the front hand retracts. The other hand is open. Sink the claws in. The hand retracts. The other hand extends sinks the claw in, and we change, extend, sink the claw in, change, extend. So with each of these movements, we're not just putting our hands out there. There's this open, close, open, close, open, close. And to a small degree, this is again, it's activating all that connective tissue right through our body. If you can think of a cat, you know, when a cat needs a cushion or something like that. It's got this kind of feeling to it, this active um, clawing action. Now, ideally as we step, we're going to have opposite hand come forwards. So we'll step, opposite hand come forwards. Step, 
opposite hand come forwards. Now, again, if you're in a small space, you're probably going to find that you can't take too many steps in one direction. You're going to need to turn quite a lot. So there's a few different ways we can turn. The most simple way, if we're here in our, uh, in our bow stance, is to simply pivot. Simply pivot. If we want to make this movement a bit larger, what we do is we transition to the cat stance and then step out. So if I want to turn this way, I transition to my cat stance and then turn out. When we're in our cat stance, we're always completely balanced. So we can then from here choose what direction we want to go on. I could go forwards, I could go to the side, I could choose to step back. So cat stance, no more room to go forwards. I'm going to go to the side instead. Cat stance, no more room to go this way. I'll come to the side instead. Another option you might like to look at is if we want to turn 180 degrees all the way in the other direction. <clears throat> Again, one of the keys here is we want to keep our feet wide as we do this. So we'll step our foot across, turn, and now we step the other foot back wide. So again, we're wide this way as well as long this way. And then I'm ready to head in the other direction. So again, if I'm facing this way and I want to turn 180 degrees the other way, I'll step my foot across, turn as I turn my other foot comes back out wide. So I have that heavy, solid, grounded sense as well. So we'll try putting some of those together, stepping and turning before we add a couple more movements. So we're stepping out, we're into our solid, deep, stance strong like a tiger we can step we extend our claws you can turn whenever you like step extend the claw step extend the claw you can step backwards if you want step and we start to feel hopefully a little bit like a tiger turn if you want to changing directions changing directions whenever you need to. Heavy, strong, but also with this lightness within your movements, smooth movement. All right, we'll pause for just a moment there. Now you'll see, essentially we're pretending to be a tiger. So this is why we often call it animal play. Um, we're doing some specific things with our body, with our energy, but it does help to be a little bit light and playful with it. And for goodness sake, you're pretending to be a cat. Um, that should be a playful, fun thing, hopefully. So we'll add in a couple uh, more movements as part of this play. So the first one we're going to do is a snatch. So essentially, I'm out for my walk as a tiger, and I hear something behind me. So I'm going to not move because I don't want whatever I hear to know. You know, I don't want to make big movements so it knows that maybe I know it's there. But I'll carefully look around to one side and then carefully look around to the other side. I'm trying to see what's behind me. Now, as I do this, as I look, you might feel there's this stimulation that comes through the side of your head that actually comes right down the side of your body. So this is stimulating our gallbladder meridian. And the same things we go, go the other way. We get the stretching stimulation down through the side of our head, side of our body, through our gallbladder meridian. Good, we feel that stretch. Okay, so I've heard it. I know there's something behind me and I wanna catch it, but it's hiding under a bush. So what I'm going to do, I step, so I can turn all the way. As I turn, I use this hand to clear the branches out of the way. And then I move my foot back over and snatch at the same time to catch whatever was under the branches. I'll do this facing another way. So I look behind, I look behind. I know where it is now. I clear the branches and snatch. 
Yeah. Again, we'll do it back the other way. Look behind. Look behind. Clear the branches. Snatch. Cool. As we get more comfortable with that, we can do it faster. Again, more like a tiger doing it. So we might look. The look will generally be quite slow. Look. Then we come to the snatch, it's snatch. Trying to catch that thing that was under the branches. We'll try one more. So look behind, look behind, and snatch. Cool. And then we can walk. Carry on with our walk. Carry on with our walk. Stepping, turning, whenever you need to, feeling that heaviness but also that contrasting lightness, that strength. <clears throat> okay, we're going to add one more movement. So we've done a snatch. The next one is going to be a pounce. So this time, instead of just quickly clearing and catching something, we're really trying to pounce, to change, chase after something that's maybe a bit further away. For this movement, we bring our hands to the ground. And then we pump our legs. So lifting one heel and then the other, pumping the legs. This starts to rise the energy up through our legs and starts to push it up into our pelvis and then up into our spine. Then we bring our hands up close to our body. So we bring the energy from our legs up through our back, up through our spine, and then we release out. Big pounce. We do a second movement, second pounce, even further, come right to the ground if we're able to. We catch it and pick it up. Lots of you will recognize this movement from within the 12 rivers, working again on the gallbladder already. And then we can step and step and step and find our way out. And we'll try another pounce. So we come hands down to the ground, bring our foot in. We pump the legs. We're looking forwards, ready to pounce. We bring our arms up close to our body, pounce. Second movement, pounce. Lift up and behind. And then we'll step and step and step. And step, and step, and step, and step, and ah, we'll release and let our energy down. So, quite a lot to take in, I'm sure. Um, and I'm not necessarily, unless you've done these practices before, not necessarily expecting people to take all of that in within one session. But maybe to get a little bit of a taste of playing like a tiger. And so there's specific things going on, specific activity up through some of the meridians, you know, up through the spine for the water element, through the side of the body for the gallbladder uh, uh, and the wood element, stimulation of the eyes again for the wood element and so on. But we also want something more than that, which is we're wanting to experience the whole energy of the tiger, which isn't just one element, it's a combination of all of them. And we want to feel that kind of tigery, tigery energy and let that be expressed within us. So hopefully a nice little introduction or play with some of those concepts for some of you if you haven't done that before. Okay, we get our energy pretty active doing that kind of practice. So We'll spend a little bit of time quieting it down, calming it down before we finish our session. So we'll start with some microcosmic orbit. Breathe in, raising the arm. Breathe out, lowering them in front. Breathe in. So bring energy up the spine and breathe out. We're lowering it down the front of our body down the front of the center of the body. Breathe in. Breathe out. So part of what we're doing with this movement is harmonizing between our sympathetic and parasympathetic nervous system. Breathe in. 
breathe out. So the activity of one flows into the other and we find balance between yin and yang. Breathe in. And out. One more, breathe in. And breathe out, feeling the energy calming as we harmonize yin and yang. Bring your hands onto your lower dantian. And further let the energy settle. Let it start to gather and stabilize in the center of your body in your lower dantian. Deep, relaxed breaths. Letting the energy flow. Moving your hands around into your lower back, massaging circles in the lower back. Pat down the back, outside of the legs, up front, inside, up the inside of one arm, up the outside of the arm, up the other arm, settling the energy, distributing the energy right through your whole body over your face, your head, your neck, down your back, down the legs, up inside of the legs, up the back of the arm, the other arm, back of the arm, over your face, over your head, over your neck. Last time around, coming up to the inside of the legs. The arm. Other arm. Move your face and your head. And down to your waist. Bring your hands back to your centre. Okay, we'll finish there. We have some time for some conversation. So, whew. I will allow people to unmute themselves. There we go. So people can can speak if they have something they'd like to uh, comment on or ask a question or anything like that. Of course, you can also uh, type into the chat box if you prefer to do that as well. So how did people go? How was that doing those practices? If, you, if anyone has. That was awesome, I thought. That was exactly what I needed. <laughs> oh, great. Maybe a little bit different from other Qigong you've done? I yeah, actually, I do have a question about. Oh, sorry. Maybe I think was that Rita, and then we'll go to whoever it was. Was it that Rita speaking? I, I'm sorry, I don't have everyone on screen right now because I'm yeah, not yeah. wanting um, to record everyone. If I don't want. How do you switch the hands in Tiger when you're standing? I know that you said you have opposite hand out front, but then when you cat step, then how does it transition? So as At you point, as you step. You simply, oh, right. Hopefully you'll be able to see here. So opposite hand forwards. As we come in, that hand's still forward, but now as we extend the other leg, opposite hand comes forward. Ah. So come in as we, yeah. Gorgeous. Thank you so much. Is it cool? Yes. Cool, cool, cool. <laughs> okay. Uh, and someone else had a question. Someone start to ask a question. 
I just wanted to say that I, you were asking us how how we found it. I found it hard, but yeah. of course, yeah, yeah, it's fine. <laughs> Were you able to, yeah, it definitely is more challenging than a lot of the practices. When we did some of the, so particularly the warm-ups, when we did some of the easier versions, were you able to do those? Yes. Where we had our knees on the ground and did the movement? Yeah. Yes, yes. Yeah, and, this, and I, I guess this is the thing, even, even if they are still challenging, we can usually modify things so that we can do them yeah. if, we, if we do them in a gentler way. And of course, when we challenge ourselves, it creates the opportunity for for growth and strengthening and but we need to find a balance there we don't want to strain but to challenge ourselves can be um quite healthy and helpful yeah i i put um, a, a cushion on my knees because they didn't like being on the mat <laughs> yeah 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 fair enough yeah i guess it's it's <laughs> it's a little bit of an interesting dynamic with with this session, because it's completely open for people to join. I'm not quite sure how to warn people what we might be thinking about doing in a session so they know ahead of time. Um, <laughs> so we'll, we'll see. Maybe there's a better way to manage that in the future. But um, it's a good opportunity sometimes to try some different things. Yeah. I think one of the things with, with Qigong is there are so many different aspects to Qigong practice. Qigong practice is so diverse. People often think of Qigong as just quite a narrow subset of Qigong that they have been exposed to and the type that they have done. But there's actually so much to it, yeah. you know, um, and, and it, can, it can feel quite different. It can work on things in quite, quite different ways. Um, yeah. I'm hoping that when you put it up on YouTube and I can do it downstairs in the lounge and I can make a few more yep. straightforward movements, I might, the brain might yep. do the body scan. <laughs> yeah. Let's get the core. Yeah, for back. sure. So definitely, so this kind of practice, again, you know, a lot of people are often used to practices where you just stand or sit in one spot, uh, which is great. It's convenient in many ways. Um, but there, there are practices like this where it's really good to move around um, as part of the practice as well. Um, and yeah, and, and, and as I mentioned, I, I don't expect people to necessarily like take all of that in all in one session if you haven't done it before. Part of the process of Qigong is to work on the gong and develop skill little by little. Um, but hopefully this was a, an interesting taster at least uh, for people of, of this type of practice. Yes, it's very so. Uh, oh, go I, ahead. I found it interesting, although it's hard. But I feel that obviously I needed more space, so I would have to practice it probably outside of the garden, because yeah, there isn't enough space here. Yeah, outside is ideal for this kind of practice, if you're able to do it. The warm ups you can do in a small space, of course, because you you know you need as much space as a um as a mat and they are great those are great by themselves but when you want to get into the play you want yeah. to be able to move freely if you're able to i mean if if you've recorded this that would be it because yeah. we could we could do it again <laughs> yep i did have this one recording so that hopefully that will be fine as long as there's no issues with that i should be able to upload it later so i see so ellen has put in the chat that she has arrived recently and didn't know about the time change. So sorry about that. It, it, it is on the links there on the website. Again, given that this is, it's kind of open for people to just join in. It's sort of hard to know how to let everyone know who might want to attend um, any changes or anything like that. So that's possibly, possibly something I'll figure something out with in the future. Yeah, sorry, <laughs> but I missed it. I was just waiting for three <laughs> o'clock right. and it was two o'clock. That's okay. Yeah. I'll do it on my own and practice so, it for the so, so this so this this is the regular time, at least for the next few weeks. And just to be aware also, I know so New Zealand and parts of the southern hemisphere have just gone through daylight savings, yeah. which is why I got things muddled up last week. I know other countries are going to be going through yeah. changing their daylight savings time yeah. in the next couple of weeks. 
So that's something to just like when you come to that, just bear in mind and go. Actually, you might need to check how that can how that time converts You're after that. Have it yeah. real soon too. Yeah, yeah. Confusing time of year um, in terms of setting appointments that relates to people in different time zones over the world. <laughs> cool. Well, look, hope, hopefully, again, even if it was challenging, hopefully people were able to, to, to do a lot of that within their, the best of their capability. And hopefully it, it might leave you feeling like you've worked a little bit because yeah. definitely you are working your physical body a bit more than perhaps um, some of the other, the other practices. But part of it also is, is this character within your energy that you're working with as well. Yeah. Um, so Beth has put into the, um, into the chat, she says, could we give you emails for communication? We'll work at least for some of uh, those of us that are regular. Yeah, possibly. There's lots of people who dip in and out as well, though. So it's, it's, I don't know how well that's going to work. I, I'll, I, there's probably going to be some changes and restructuring um, at some point in the future. So at, at the moment, I think the best thing is if, if you can just, I'll try to put any any changes that I know in advance. I'll try to put it onto the web page where the links are. And so, if you can if you can just check there, that's probably the the best thing for right now. Um, and then um, and then we'll see. There'll probably be some other changes later. Thank you. Cool. Okay. Hi, Thanks for coming along, everyone. And I saw I saw see your you, training you again. Are these going to continue? Sorry. I saw your your training teachers. Will these classes can can you hear me? Yes, I saw your yep. training teachers. Are you going to keep holding these classes for us if we're not enrolled in your teacher training? Oh sure, I'm doing a teacher training right now, and we've been running these. Um, so yes, yeah, so these these will continue. Again, they probably are going to restructure at some point in the, in the future, but as as of now, they're continuing. So uh, yeah. Again, best thing is probably just check check on the um, on the website where I put those links, and uh, you know I'll put things there. And of and of course, if things are coming up further in advance, I'll I'll, I'll also talk about them within these sessions so people know. Hey, this this change is coming of some sort. Thank you, John. Thank you so much. <laughs> okay. Okay. Bye bye. bye, -bye.